Hi folks and welcome back to our channel. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be focusing on what it's like to live in a van with a cat. Specifically this terror here. So when we got Amy, we wanted her to feel like she had her own safe space in the camper and she was only a little baby so we went to Walmart and we bought her this nothing special I think it's the cheapest one they had but you can see a year later she loves her bed and she's still got her first toy Mitch So having a bed was great in the van, um, but it's really good when we ever leave the camper if we stay in someone else's house or an apartment or anything like that because we can take it out with us and she knows it, it's familiar, it's the smell of somewhere she knows and she can feel safe being somewhere different then, which is useful when you're travelling. With Amy's bed sorted out, the next thing we focused on was Amy's litter tray. Being in a camper van, it's not always possible to let her go outside to use the toilet. We made the mistake originally though of buying an unlidded litter tray. As you can see, it didn't go too well the first time. <laughs> what is she doing? now is a custom made one. Uh, we found the litter trays in pet shops are a little bit too big so we went into Walmart, bought a box and cut a door in ourselves. It's small enough to fit in the camper and move around when we need to and she really likes it. She likes it so much sometimes that she will come inside to use it when she's surrounded by sand. So this is Amy coming out of her litter tray. She's come in just to use her litter tray. Um, despite the fact that we are actually in the desert. And we are surrounded by a litter full tray. Full of sand. She's come in whining at us because she needs to use. And now she's not even cleaning the litter tray. Her toilet. She likes it. She's a lady. She is a lady. We decided it was really important that we trained Amy on a harness as soon as we could get her to fit into one because we want to take her on walks, we might need to take her out of the camper, it's not always safe to let her run free. So we bought this harness for her to start with, it's Eglue One off Amazon, um, you can see the link for that below. And it's a really great harness but now we're in Mexico we thought it's a little bit too warm for her, there's quite a lot of fabric on it so we now use this really thin one just when it's really really hot because otherwise I think she overheats a bit. Um, this is also really useful not just for when we're worried about safety and letting her out of the camper van in somewhere like a city but also in the morning we have before let her off and then she wanders off and doesn't come back for I think four hours was our record waiting so sometimes good just to keep her nearby if we need to. So we also have an extendable lead this is quite useful because it gives her a little bit of freedom, but not too much, so she doesn't wander too far. We, we've got one of these carabiners as well, so we normally tend to just clip it onto the camper and then she can wander in a close proximity, so it's kind of useful. Just a bog standard extendable lead, I think it's set five metres.
<laughs> so we've got limited space living in a VW, but we wanted to keep something with us that we could transport Amy in. Uh, it's been quite useful when we've had uh, vet appointments. It's also quite useful if we're on a walk and she's struggling and she needs a bit of a break, we can put her in this. There are multiple bag options for cats on the market. We chose this one because it's got this big plastic area which we thought would be quite nice for her because she can watch what's going on outside. Uh, it's been really useful actually. Uh, I definitely recommend it. It's very good quality. It's quite lightweight. Again, we'll put the link for this in the description below. Uh, one of the downsides of the bag is that it's not completely collapsible, although we can get it away in our small cupboard, there are collapsible ones on the market, so if like this is short on space, it may be worth checking them out. Um, because it is plastic as well, in Mexico when it's coming up to 40 degrees, obviously it's not practical to put Amy inside it, although we don't really take her on walks when it gets this hot anyway. Enjoying that there. So the bag's really useful for times like this when this little one needs to come to the vet. Hey. Fortunately this time it's just an infection from a cat. So last Amy accessory we have really is this mat. It's <laughs> battered from a lot of use. This again is off Amazon. Um, there are cheaper ones but we picked this one and I'm really glad we did because this one has like the gel inside and the other ones are just a silk kind of covering rather than actually this has like cool gel in it which is why it's got a repair patch because it leaks otherwise. But um, this one's really great. You stick it in the fridge and it stays cold and if it's like just out it's kind of cool touch anyway and she really loves her cool mat because when we're somewhere really hot like Baja over the summer we had up to 45 degrees and sometimes when we're driving in the day in the camper it gets really really warm so we found this to be really helpful and help keeping her cool. So this is a pressure operated cooling mat we just bought Amy off Amazon and for the first time she's actually using it which is great because today is pretty warm. We also have this not essential piece of kit, but it's really, really cute little jumper for her. Um, but we do find it quite useful because traveling in a van, sometimes we go really quickly from um, somewhere cold to somewhere hot, especially in Mexico. You can drive from the coast to the top of the mountains and you can have 30 degrees temperature difference, which is a bit much for her to adapt to and when it's cold. She does love her little jumper. We also, have the Christmas elf outfit. Not so keen on that one though. Not as practical either. Not as practical but hilarious. I hope you found some of those accessories useful. I know we find them we really use them. super. Yeah, most of them on a daily basis and they help keep Amy happy. Yeah, it makes her happy and it makes her comfortable, which is the most important thing, I reckon. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so overall, living with Amy, uh, it's amazing. I wouldn't change it for the world. We get a lot of people who are a bit shocked when they see us living with a cat and they wouldn't think it was possible. Yeah. A lot of people ask us the same kind of questions we get asked. Uh, does she not run away? A lot. Yeah, and we pick and choose when we let her out of the camper without her leave.
When you're this high up and you're tapped. Is it not? <laughs> First ever lead free walk. Girly. I'm not gonna lie, some spots when we're really comfortable and she's really comfortable, she does wander off a little bit further than we'd probably like her to. She doesn't run away though, like she will always come back, but sometimes she has a good explore, but yeah. we've never had her not come back. No, um, we have had a, an incident recently where she hadn't come back by about two o'clock in the morning and we're staying on a person's property. We had a quick look around and we eventually found her in the property next door, which was walled up. So somehow she managed to get in, but then she couldn't get her way back out, which was a midnight rescue mission yes. involving ladders and me in my hippie trousers, once again. Always. But yeah, never by choice, I don't think. No. And if she doesn't like that, if she doesn't come back, you know that you need to go look for her. But generally, it's not a problem at all. She's quite happy around the campus. She knows it's her home wherever it is. If you are thinking of having a cat, the main thing I would recommend is get them used to the camper first of all, before you even go on the trip, put them inside it without the engine running, yep. slowly build up that confidence, as we said earlier about the bed, get their bed, put it inside so they can get used to it, and then maybe you can start playing around, turning the engine on, just leaving it running, Yeah, go get for them, a drive around the block. Let them find their little safe place that they like to sit, because I think every cat's got its favourite spot. Yes, yeah, definitely. And then once you've done that, you could think about harness training as well, like nice and slow. Yeah. Every cat's going to be different to harness training. We got Amy quite young. She was always really good, but she was a baby when we started. so Which helps when they're younger because they can get used yeah. to it more. I think the older the cat, the longer you're going to have to persevere getting them used to it. But, but I think it's probably doable on most cats. Yeah. And they'll get used to the van if you kind of take it slowly. We love travelling with her and... I don't feel like it restricts us no. and a lot of the time like people think oh sometimes you go somewhere and they're like oh you can't have pets but cats don't kind of count the not, same as not dogs. Not our experience no. Normally they kind of give you a bit of a weird look and then go okay you can now come in. <laughs> it's not the same as having a dog. So I hope this video has been useful. It's a bit unusual for us to do more of a how-to guide rather than a, a summary of our travel. Don't forget to like and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Every subscriber really makes a difference to us now. And if you it? have any questions, you can yeah. leave us a comment. Please or send drop us a, a comment below and yeah. we will try our best to answer them as best we can. Yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, until next time. Start. Amy is now here. <laughs> Amy does not like getting wet feet.
not read the sign, love. 